This is Jim McConnell coming to you from Redmond, Oregon. We are going through a series of videos on how to read an SDS. Today we are in video number five. The previous four videos, video number one, covered the entire SDS. Video number two covered sections one and two. Video number three caught sections three, which is the ingredient area. Sec uh, video four covered sections four through eight, which covered uh, you know, personal protection, fire, safety, exposure, that kind of thing. And then today we're covering sections nine through 16. So the rest of the SDS. Most of this really won't concern you too much, but we're gonna go over it anyway. Section nine, physical and chemical properties of the material. Um, it's pretty general. So here we just have density, boiling point, molecular weight. It's a mixture. So we really don't have a lot for some of this stuff. Uh, because it doesn't evaporate. There is no vapor pressure. The molecular weight is a blend of different things. The appearance, what does it look like? So if you open it up, what does it look like? What does it smell like, right? Um, and so it's a clear or pigmented liquid. But you're going to find that to be true with just about all of our products. Solubility, this is not soluble in water. That's primarily what people are looking for. pH, it's really tough to attain a pH because it's not water soluble. Viscosity, it's approximately 15,000 centipoise. Um, so it's a very, it's a fairly thin material. It's thinner than a lot of our Lexiline building products, but it's thicker than our TAC, which is down around, well, I don't know, less than 50 centipoise. Stability and reactivity. So what's going to happen if this comes in contact with other things? Uh, if it comes in contact with oxidizers or nitrogen, it could just start generating some heat. It's going to cure on its own. If it gets above certain temperatures, it's going to cure on its own. So you want to avoid oxidizers, peroxides, like acrylic powder, uh, strong acids or alkalis. You'll want to avoid those because all of those can make it unstable and become a solid. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Those really pertain, those sections pertain more to what a doctor might want to know or what a... Uh, uh, a medical professional like an EMT might need to know, uh, or the fire department. So on to the next section, toxicological information. This is something that you might want to take a look at, uh, but on the SDSs I've seen, some of them, most of them, um, really don't cover it all that well. Jimmy gel in itself is not toxic, and it does not pose a significant health hazard. So there's not a lot of information here. You'll find more information if you take a look at, say, our Vitaprime. Uh, but in most of our gels that are true gels, especially ones that contain high concentrations of oligomers, uh, you're not going to find a lot in there. Ecological information. So what happens if you spill it on the ground? Well, if you spill it on the ground, the sun's out, it's going to cure. So it's really not going to be a problem there. Same thing if it gets on the asphalt. Um, this is not a hazard for plants or animals. And if it gets into water, it's not going to affect aquatic life. Uh, something more like our Vitaprime, that might be more of an issue. Uh, but for the most part, this really is not, this, this product is pretty darn safe to handle in a lot of different forms. So disposal considerations, <clears throat> talk to your local people. But um, for me, I, I would advise maybe breaking the bottle very carefully and exposing it to curing light and then curing it up. Um, that's what we do, and then we th dispose of the glass and the cured plastic all in one part. So transportation information, this is not really pertinent to anything that you guys have to do unless you have to ship it someplace and if it's a dangerous good. So if you have to ship it, say you, we say ship it back to us, put it in the original box. It has all the labeling on it anyway. So keep one of those boxes around and more than likely we'll say, oh, just keep it, use it, or... Um, you know, put it outside, cure it up, pour it on a piece of cardboard, get rid of it that way uh, so that you're not disposing of anything that's going to be liquid. And if we ask that you kindly send it back, if you keep one of the original boxes with all the proper documentation, then all the documents are all taken care of and you just send it back to us and we're good to go. Section 15, regulatory information. So titanium dioxide, the rest of this stuff, uh, you know, Sarah reporting, TOSCA, CERCLA, 
all of those things, pretty much none of our products are going to fall into those categories. So you're pretty much good to go as is. Don't have to worry about that state regulatory information. Some states, oddly enough, consider titanium dioxide listing on uh, hazardous substances, even though it's used in sunscreen. So not a big deal. Benzophenone, we don't use benzophenone in any of our products anymore. This is a reminder that I need to fix the STS and take it out. Um, I have a spelling error right here. Uh, so anyway, we'll fix a couple of things. But this stuff is pretty much, is pretty much harmless. Uh, just careful if you get it on your skin or your eyes or if you inhale it. It's not har harmless if you inhale it. So just be careful. Uh, oh, section 15.8. I really should go over that because it is important to know that it can be an irritant. There are some risk, risk uh, phrases associated with it and safety phrases. If you need to look those up, just type in a Google search S2 safety phrase uh, or S23 safety phrase, or in this case here, a risk phrase. So R36 risk phrase, R37 risk phrase, and that will tell you some of that information. Or you can just scroll back up here to the top of the SDS in section two, and most of those should be covered up here as well. Okay. Uh, and then at the bottom of this, you have the people that wrote it. So if you have any questions about it, and you see something that we need to address, just give us a phone call, send me an email, and we will address it at our earliest convenience, which should be pronto, because we want to make sure that they're accurate. That's pretty much SDSs in a nutshell in five easy videos. Hopefully I didn't make it too boring. Hopefully it was a little bit entertaining. Maybe you even giggled, but I doubt it. All right. Thank you very much. We'll talk to you uh, in the airwaves in the future. And if you see me at a trade show or something like that, please stop by and say hi. I'm usually pretty friendly. Thank you. Bye-bye.